This week on El Cara Ham Radio, we're going to take a look at the latest offering from Compactenna, the LMR1 Tri-Band. This is the 9-inch model, and we're going to take it out into the field, and we're going to see how well it does in rural southeastern Kentucky. We'll take a look at SWR, among other things. This week on El Cara Ham Radio. Alrighty, so now let's take a look at what comes in the little plastic baggie. Now, kind of ignore that magnetic base over there to the left. Dr. Jack Nielsen sent that along as a good recommendation uh, or an example. But we're looking at the bag, the paperwork, and another little Ziploc on the inside. Now that we've removed the cellophane bag, we have the antenna. Looks like a can, if you will. It's got the NMO mount on the bottom. And then inside the little plastic baggie, we've got a little gasket, rubber gasket, and a little bit of lube, if you will, to ensure that we can keep water out of the can, out of the antenna when it is screwed onto the base. So we'll be utilizing that a little bit later here in the next segment. And then we have our paperwork. There's a lot of good information on the paperwork as far as how to mount it, different uh, options for putting it in your attic possibly, or utilizing it as a base antenna. We're going to be using it as a mobile antenna, and this is a tri-band antenna that uh, you can use similar to the 7.5 inch model we reviewed before. Now that we've taken a look at the bag contents, let's now take a look at each of the pieces outside of the bag. So first thing, of course, is the compact tenna. This is a little bit longer than the seven and a half, <laughs> by an inch and a half. And again, it has that NMO connection, and we'll just screw that on to the magnetic base. Now, Dr. Jack was nice enough to send us a base that he recommends. I got lucky uh, by ordering the cheapest one I could find on uh, Amazon. But uh, I'm sure you can find one. But pretty flat. That'll be the main thing. And I'll show you the one that he sent from Laird Electronics. Um, and then we've got a little bit of lube, as we saw. And we have a gasket. And we're going to put the lube on the gasket and on the threads when we screw it on to the magnetic base. Now, the base that he sent is from Laird Communications or Laird Connectivity. Excuse me. I'll get it right here in just a second. Laird Connectivity. I don't have any, uh, you know, links or anything for that, but I'm sure you could probably do a search and find. Uh, it looks to be about uh, a two and a half to three inch magnetic base here. Looking at the back here, doesn't give us a whole lot of extra information. But again, this was sent with the antenna to give it the best possible opportunity to uh, shine in our evaluation. And this is essentially what it looks like. So you've got your uh, NMO base right here. You've got your nice magnetic on the back. Don't believe there's anything that we have to peel off and then a little bit of coax to go with it. And we'll be testing this once it's on the truck just to see what type of SWR numbers we ultimately get. Now one of the first things we want to do is open up our lube. And so this has a really easy little tab that you can just um, uh, tear off. And what we want is a little bit of lube on the threads of the actual magnetic mount uh, itself. Don't have to put any on the center conductor, but we do want some on the thread. So what I'm going to do is just put a decent amount around the threads, around the edges here. And then when we tighten this down, ultimately it will spread that lube out and give us a nice connection as well as to prevent corrosion. The other thing we want to do is we have our gasket. So the gasket is there to ensure that we keep water intrusion out, to give it a nice tight seal, if you will. We want to put a little bit of lube on the gasket as well, according to the instructions. So I'm going to put just a little bit on my finger here, and what we're going to do is just kind of put a little bit of this lube, and then we'll spread it around the edges, and we'll fit that down on the magnetic mount once we get done. So what we'll do is then we'll use our thumb and finger just to spread that around the circumference here of this gasket. 
and then the next thing to do will be to put it on the base itself. So I'm going to go ahead and press this down, but I will show you once I have it down and in place, once we get it completely on the base. Alrighty, so now what we have is the base with the gasket already in place. And at this point, let me pull this up where you guys can see it, we're going to screw it on. You want to be careful, make sure that you don't cross thread this. But overall, it should be a pretty easy thing to get started. Sometimes you do have to press down just a little bit to get her started. What we want to do is hand tighten this. You want to see that your gasket makes a good seal. You may see a little bit of that lube kind of gel out just a little bit. That'll be okay. And this will help with water intrusion uh, as we uh, put it up on the truck and when it's out in the elements. At this point, we're going to take it to the truck. We're going to put it in various locations. For those of you that didn't watch the seven and a half inch compact antenna video, we're going to go through the same SWR checks with this antenna. It's a little bit different. Obviously, it's a little bit taller. And we want to check to see if the instructions where it says to put it on the corner are indeed the best locations. We'll, we'll start in the middle. We'll go to the front. We'll go to the back. And we'll see what those SWR readings are when we get back. So in the next segment, let's head out to the truck. Okay, so as we just saw, the antenna is right smack dab in the middle of the roof of the truck. And so what I plan to do, turn on our MFJ analyzer here. And uh, I believe I have it already set up for the range of frequencies that I want to test. So you can see right now, we're at about four to four, but we're nowhere near the frequency that we really want to be on. So let's continue to pull this in. So you can see it dropped to 1.6 way down there in the band. In fact, let's go back to that. So you can see from the standpoint of resistance, not too bad. But let's go up to where the repeater frequency is that we use here locally. Let me try to move this so we don't get a glare, or at least as much as one. There we go. And let's go to 144. Dot, excuse me, 146.880. So let me come down to 144. So, you know, really low in the band. We got a comment the other day would this work with single sideband? And uh, right here in the frequency, I would say not so much. Now it's going to start coming down as we move up into the band. Now keep in mind, this is in the middle of the roof, right? So we're not expecting it to really come in very well. I'm going to come up to about our repeater frequency, about right there, 146.880. And you can see it's 4.6 to 1 in the middle of the roof of the truck. So that's really not great, right? So we know that that's not where it should be. Maybe we're used to other antennas and we just popped it up there and we didn't check the SWR. You would be in a bad way from the standpoint of the amount of power that you're sending out of the antenna and how much is actually being reflected back, which in this case would be four to over four to one. So let's move it to another area of the truck that would be more conducive to the engineering on this antenna. So in the next segment, let's see where I put it next. Alrighty, so now we're back in the truck. I've had to close the door to keep the lawnmower noise down to a minimum. But uh, let's turn on the analyzer and let's see where we're sitting now. Alrighty, so... Hmm, a little bit uh, tall. Let's, uh, let's come down to our 146.880 number. So I had to make an adjustment. Let's tune her up there. Ooh, so it's starting to move in the right direction look at that 148 147 it starts to dip and then it goes right back up now if we go to 146.880 which is our repeater frequencies the only reason why i'm using this is it's our local repeater frequency but it would give me an indication Ooh, six you know i'm thinking this front middle location is not so bueno yeah, not, uh, no bueno. So we are definitely going to have to make an adjustment on where the antenna is placed. And, you know, if you haven't seen the other video, 
um, this may be a surprise to you. You know, some of these locations with this particular antenna are not where you would typically put it. Um, or you're putting it where you would typically put the antenna, but you notice this particular antenna doesn't behave the same. So it's not the same as, you know, the comment that I use for several years, putting it smack dab in the middle of the roof to give you the best SWR and the best propagation. So let us put it where it should be. And in the next segment, we will test the SWR once again and see if that makes a much of a difference with the antenna and the magnetic base combination. Be right back. All right, so let's uh, turn the uh, meter back on and let's see what we get here. So yeah, it's it's uh, it's not bad. It's just that it is not as good as I had hoped. 1.6, and when I say as I hoped, I've seen higher numbers out of this here just a few minutes ago. This is actually one of the better readings that I've gotten. Let's pull it down closer to my repeater frequency. Again, you could test it wherever you happen to be. It's coming in at about 1.7 but you can see it's a little bit jittery and that makes me think that my meter is just a little bit wonky. But in any event, if I go down, you can see that SWR really starts coming up. If I go back up to 148, you can see it, uh, it can be one to one where it's currently sitting on the truck. But for my repeater frequency, it's a little bit higher than that. Now, as long as we can keep it below two, ideally I'd like to see it, you know, uh, down around um, 1.2 or something like that, but I would live with 1.7, 1.6, somewhere in that ballpark. It's uh, anything below two is certainly usable, and uh, that's about what we're getting here. It's fluctuating a little bit. I don't have a good answer for that. I think it's mostly my meter, but 1.7 is what I was getting. That's why I wanted to check it with the dummy load and make sure that my uh, my little MFJ here is not going wonky. I may still replace the batteries in this before I release the video, but we'll see. So you can see it's jumped up to 2.3, 2.4, and all it's doing is just sitting here. Now we're back to 1.7. So I think it's more my meter than anything. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come right back and do some tests on out in the field, similar to what we did with the seven and a half inch compact antenna, and let's see how it reaches out to our local repeater. Alrighty, we've made it to uh, the White Lily area here in my local uh, area, and this is about 20 something miles away. I'll put a map up similar to one, if not the same one that I did when we tested the seven and a half inch compact antenna. Now remember the antenna is on the bottom right corner, or back right corner uh, above the uh, back right passenger seat. And uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna check in on the repeater, and what I'll do is I'll compare the signal strength uh, coming back from the repeater from this uh, location to the seven and a half inch model as well as a couple other antennas that we did in the previous comparison. So let's check in with the repeater and let's see what kind of uh, uh, communications we have at, the, at this distance. KY4 BDP mobile testing the nine inch compact antenna for a signal check. So notice we didn't go in the red. Scanning it for VXS. Uh, you're coming in uh, pretty good. Sounding really good. Roger that, uh, Andrew. I'm at uh, the 1003 intersection with uh, 192 and uh, out in White Lily. The uh, signal strength coming back from the repeater doesn't quite uh, jump into the red, but it is completely copyable on your end with very little scratch. Uh, there's uh, really no scratch on my end. You are a uh, uh, hair uh, quieter than you were the first time I talked to you, uh, but overall it's sounding really good. Alrighty, Mr. Andrew, thanks for uh, hanging out. Uh, I know you're doing homework, but uh, thanks for helping me out. I'll be putting this in a video coming up uh, in not too distant feature in uh, future, and uh, appreciate you uh, helping me out this afternoon. Sounding good, so glad I could help. KY4 BDP Mobile. So what we'll do is we'll compare the two pictures. Uh, we don't go into the red. Over here, 
on this blue line, that's where it can go red if the signal is really, really strong. But I'm, I'm at a pretty good distance, and uh, things uh, not quite red, but I think we were about in the same position. Uh, but we'll do that comparison, and then we'll come right back and wrap up the video. See you in the next segment. Okay, so let's do some comparisons from the same distance that was on the map a moment ago. This is the Comet antenna, and it's a traditional antenna. You would put it in the middle, or potentially you would side mount it. And uh, it always did very well for me, and it's right at that border before we go into the red. So pretty strong receive. This is a stub antenna. It's a shorter antenna, dual band, 2 meter and 70 centimeter. We actually got one segment into the red on the receive. So it was actually a little bit more sensitive on the receive from the same distance, which was to me a little surprising, but uh, uh, that was my first antenna. And as we transition to the seven and a half inch compact antenna, it's actually one segment below that transition to red. And so I felt pretty good about that because it was about where the Comet antenna was, not quite as good as the Stubby, but uh, it was very copyable. If you go back and watch the earlier 7.5 inch model video, you can tell it's very copyable at that 20 plus mile distance. But now we're looking at the 9 inch LMR1 from Compact Tenna. The 9 inch is a little bit more sensitive than the, the 7.5 inch model from the same distance on receive. And again, as we saw from KN4 VXS, incredibly copyable with no discernible scratch. And so it was doing a really good job from this same location, but back right uh, roof mount. So in the next segment, let's come back and summarize. Okay, so what do we think of the LMR1 antenna? Well, I like it. Yes, it's a little bit taller, but not a whole lot taller than the 7.5 inch model. Does it work a little better? It seems to. I will say though, and this is not a dig at the antenna, it is extremely sensitive to where it is placed on your vehicle. And there's a good chance with some of the more uh, late model vehicles that you might be purchasing that are mostly aluminum and so forth, that you might have a difficult time getting this to work. And uh, if it's aluminum in most areas of the body, you're not gonna be able to use this antenna. It does need a steel frame and specifically a corner of that frame to work at its best. So you would really want to take a look at the type of vehicle you have possibly utilize a magnet to see where on your vehicle it would be able to affix and then run your SWR checks to see if you can get it down into a usable range. And that's the key with this particular antenna. It's very sensitive to where it is placed. So I did go for a drive around Lake Cumberland and I wanted to see how it would be able to check in to our APRS uh, repeater or digipeter. And as you can see on the map, as I went all the way around Lake Cumberland, it was able to check in at various points. Obviously, there's some dips, hills, mountains, and so forth in between. But by and large, it did get out really well. And so I'm pretty pleased for our southeastern Kentucky region that it's able to reach our particular APRS and our regular repeater as well. So the LMR1 retails for $179. I believe at DX Engineering at the moment. You might be able to find it in other vendors down the road. Well, let's wrap up the video. For the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association, I'm KY4BDP. Hope you've had a good look at this antenna. Go out and have fun, and I'll salute with a 73.